Hi everyone, I'm Julia. Hi, I'm Sarah. And today we're going to be talking to you about women's empowerment. So Sarah, how can we best understand the situation of women survivors of war? Are there any similarities that you notice between the women you meet? That's a great question. Um, there are definitely similarities between the women we serve. Uh, women for an international reaches out to women who are often left behind those who struggle with poverty, with violence, who are denied basic education and healthcare, and who suffer greatly from conflict. More than half of the women in our programs have had little to no formal education, and all of them earn less than $1.25 a day. Many are widows, refugees, or survivors of rape and abuse. But I'd say that every woman who enrolls in our program has her own very unique story of resilience and hope. Women affected by war and conflict constantly remind us of their incredible strength and their determination to overcome the most daunting challenges. And one of these women is uh, Sev from Iraq. So one night as she was sleeping in the safety of her home, Sev was woken up by her neighbor who was telling her um, that her and her family needed to escape because Islamic State fighters were killing men and kidnapping girls. Sev and her husband couldn't believe what was happening, but they decided to run in the middle of the night without taking anything. Sev witnessed rape and her family was separated. Fortunately, Sev's family was reunited at the Kurdistan border and they found refuge now in Kanke, a small town um, in Iraqi Kurdistan. Sev is sadly deeply traumatized uh, but since joining the Women for an International program, she has found that being with other women brings her calm. There is still a long way to go for Sev to find her peace, but she's hopeful for the future and she wants her daughters to be successful, to go to university and to build careers. And stories like the one of Sev are sadly far too common. Um, but what is common as well is, is the, the strength of the women we serve and their compassion for one another. Um, because after the loss of loved ones, it is truly the women who take on the burden of being a carer and a provider. Many are balancing the challenges of being the sole breadwinner whilst also nurturing and caring for their families. But yet they are not victims, they are survivors. They are all determined to create a brighter future for themselves, um, but not only just themselves, they're determined to create a better future for their loved ones and their communities. Um, and they don't want handouts, they just want some support in getting there. So based on your experience, Julia, what is the most effective way to help these women? So the thing that makes our program so unique and I personally think so effective is that we have a really holistic approach um, to helping women survivors of war. So when a sister joins our program, she learns a marketable job skill, which is either um, tailoring, bread making, poultry keeping, it really depends on where we work. Um, and as well as that, she's given business training to turn her um, chosen skill into a stable income so she can support herself and her family. So she starts earning and saving money and receives support to establish cooperatives, associations, village savings and loan associations so that she and other women in her community can make the most of their earnings. So she also learns um, practical knowledge about her health, including reproductive health, stress management and the importance of good hygiene and nutrition so that she can protect herself and her family from preventable diseases. We also make sure that she's connected to local healthcare providers so that she's given the most accurate support that she can, that she can get. Lastly, she gains knowledge of her rights on key issues like voting, access to land, divorce, custody of her children and domestic abuse. So once she learns her rights, she is em empowered and equipped to stand up for them and she can share her knowledge with others in her community. So it's combining all of these pieces together that proves the most efficient and sustainable way to helping women survivors of war rebuild their lives. Because you can train a woman in a new skill, but if she's sick due to poor nutrition or has no knowledge of her rights and is being beaten by her husband and told that she can't go to work, then there's no way that she can use those skills to benefit herself and her family. She's just going to be um, halted at every corner. So the other piece that supports this is the way in which we run our program. So when a woman joins the program, she comes together with 24 other women and 
forms a tight support group that helps break the isolation caused by war and insecurity. So this is a really safe space that's something that these women don't have at home and sometimes have never had before. Um, they're surrounded by women just like them where they can support each other through their training and beyond that. So actually a lot, a lot of the women in our program end up forming cooperatives with their classmates so they can build their new businesses together, which is really lovely. Um, Sarah, can you tell us why we need to be helping women specifically? Yeah, sure. Um, so there's a quote actually that really illustrates the answer to this question. Um, and it was said by Major General Patrick Kema, who is a former UN peacekeeping commander. And he once said that today is probably become more dangerous to be a woman in a conflict um, than a soldier. And that's because when war and insecurity take hold, women are disproportionately impacted. They bear the heaviest burden of violence, poverty and inequality. And, and if we look into a bit more depth um, at these three kind of areas, the first one is violence against women. And we know that the effects of conflict directly impact on the risk of violence against women and girls. And unfortunately, in all of the countries uh, where we work, um, women have been the targets of systematic rape and sexual violence, which are used as a weapon to terrorize and destroy communities. The second one is poverty, um, and gender norms restrict women's access to education, um, to opportunities and economic resources. Um, and economic empowerment is not only critical for women to reach their own full potential and be financially independent, it's also key to achieve a nation's economic growth, poverty reduction, health and education. And the last one is inequality. And patriarchal norm also um, have a big um, impact um, because it means that women are often excluded from decision making. Education on household issues allows women to better influence the decision that affects their own family. Um, and our program helps with this. So for example, 84% of women when graduating from the program report that they're involved in household family planning decision-making compared to only 47% at enrollment. But despite these disadvantages, we've seen that women are absolutely in essential in caring and providing for their families in times of crisis. Often women are the ones rebuilding communities after the devastation of war. So investing in women um, really means investing in sustainable change for everyone. Stronger women means stronger nations. And coming to the theme of um, today's talk, women's empowerment, what do you think and what should we think when we hear women's empowerment? Um, this is a really good question, really important as well. Um, so empowerment means a lot of different things to different people. So the phrase in um, popular culture, the phrase women's empowerment has become somewhat of a buzzword and has over the years sometimes lost its primary meaning. So if you, act, if you just simply look up the definition in the dictionary, empowerment means the process of gaining freedom and power to what you want, to do what you want or to control what happens to, happens to you, excuse me. So empowerment sometimes sounds like something that is done to you, but it isn't, it's something that you do for yourself. So what we do is we, do, we don't empower women survivors of war, we give them the tools and resources they need to empower themselves. So really empowerment's all about power. So who has the power, who is excluded from power and why? So as a community, we really need to change the social norms and traditions that results in women being excluded from power and decision-making across the board. Um, at Women for Women International, our vision is to create a world in which all women determine the course of their own lives to reach their full potential. So women's empowerment to us is equipping women with the knowledge, skills and networks they need to become financially independent, regain their confidence and actively participate in their communities. Completely. Um, and I'm curious to know what are your three tips um, um, that you would give us to empower the women around us? Um, so as I said, um, and what I firmly believe is that when that empowerment comes from within, uh, however, your, 
your environment strongly contributes to your journey to empowerment. So it's really important to surround yourself with people who support you and vice versa for you to support those around you, sort of creating a ripple effect of empowerment. So my three tips for you today would be to boost self-esteem. So simply showing others that you care and um, boosting their self-esteem can go a long way because women especially tend to be extremely self-critical and it's easy to not give ourselves props when we deserve it and when we need it. So if you see a friend criticizing herself too harshly, just try and step in and remind her how great she is and support her as much as you can. Just try and shut down any negative self-talk that you might be hearing. Uh, secondly, uh, being open and honest is really important. Uh, especially now more than ever. Um, we really need to talk to each other and share our experiences, uh, all the good and the bad, our hopes, our worries, and our struggles, because this really brings us close, closer together and sends a powerful message of support, um, saying you're not alone, um, I empathize with you, and you've got this. And lastly, we need to fight against injustice. So we're all part of this global sisterhood, and unfortunately, some of our sisters, um, like the women in our program, are much less fortunate than we are in the UK. So it's really important to recognize that privilege and harness that privilege and that power that we have and use it to advocate for women's rights and speak up in the face of injustice wherever we can. So that is our session on women's empowerment. We hope you learned something today and that you enjoyed it. Thank you so much. Bye.